Amen. Sister Deidre, y'all give Sister Deidre another hand praise. Thank you. Thank you so much. God bless you. Thank you. Because of who he is, not what he's done, but because of who he is, that's why we worship. Amen? I don't know if you all keep up with business, what's happening in the world today. And it is a known fact that every business, every organization, every ministry is dependent upon leadership for its sustainability and for its growth. The future of any organization rises on the strength of the leader or it falls because of the weakness and the failure of leadership. That happens in the business world. But the same holds true for the church and the family. Leadership is vital. It is critical for any organization to function and to have a future. Leadership is critical. If the family needs leaders, then the church most certainly needs leaders. And in case you were not aware that we are a family. The church is a family. That's why you find so many times, and uh, Elder Waddell said this morning, the word brethren is used over 500 times in the Bible because when you and I become sons and daughters of Christ, we become related. Not through earthly human DNA, but through spiritual DNA. So I want you to turn with me to the book of 1 Thessalonians, chapter 5. And if you would stand to your feet, and let's read that together. First Thessalonians chapter 5. We're just going to read two verses, 12 and 13. If you don't have a Bible, the words are on the screen in front of you. But if you don't have a Bible, please raise your hand so we can get you a Bible. We can't be a Bible-believing, Bible-preaching, Bible-teaching church, and nobody looks at the Bible. Amen? Read that with me together. And we urge you, brethren, to recognize those who labor among you and are over you in the Lord and admonish you and to esteem them very highly in love for their work's sake. Be at peace among yourselves. Father, we come before you this morning. And Father, we too are full this morning. Lord, not because of what we have, but because of what we have in you. Lord, it's not the things that we possess, but it's because you possess us. We are your people, the sheep of your pasture. And Father, it is by your grace and mercy that you've allowed us to gather one more Sunday, a Sunday that was not promised to us. So Lord, prepare our hearts and our minds to receive your word. Lord, that we would be obedient to what you have instructed us in Scripture. Help me, Lord. Speak to me and through me to your people. May the words that I speak come with clarity. Not flowery words, but just simple, plain words that resonate in our hearts. Lord, we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. Lowry, uh, I have to tell you this, that there's a saying that you can tell how much the Lord loves you by who he sends to lead you. You can tell how much the Lord loves you by who he sends to lead you. And Lowry, when I think about Minister Mary Small, Minister Hope Golden, Minister Salt Wall, and Minister Joe Wallace, I just believe with all my heart 
that God is saying to you all, I love y'all so much that I sent you all the best. I didn't send you leftovers. I sent you the best because I love you. And I want you all to know, as we celebrate our associate ministers today, I want to say to each one of them, how near and dear you are to my heart. How much I appreciate and thank God for you. For how he has molded you, how he has wired you, how he has made you, how he has shaped you, all of the things that he brought you through. And for how you use all of that, your gifting, your, your calling, all of that that you bring here and you share with us. I am so grateful for you all. I do have a biased opinion. Y'all won't know who this is, but the young folks know who I'm talking about. Young folk, y'all know who Khaled is? Y'all know who Khaled is, right? Y'all know who Khaled is, the record producer, the rap producer, Khaled? Khaled. Khaled, 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 potato, potato, tomato, tomato. He has a saying, we the best. They the best. My biased opinion is they the best. And so I, I said, you know what, I, I need to do something for them. As a way of encouragement to them, that we needed to say something about them today. I am so proud to work with them. They are gifted, anointed, and they're humble. This is an awesome collection of God's servants. They serve in various capacities, different ways, but they love and they give from their hearts. So many things that they do, they never talk about. You don't know it until they show up at your doorstep, but they will never put it on 10 for 10. You won't read it in the Lowry newsletter. You won't catch it on the bulletin board. But they use their own time, their own money, their own resources to bless those who are in need. And so it's not only good that we recognize them today, it's appropriate that we take out a Sunday. In fact, it is biblical to do it. Based on 1 Thessalonians 5, 12, and 13, as Paul wraps up this letter, he uses these words of encouragement to the church in Thessalonica to appreciate, to recognize the leaders that God had placed before them. And it was hard for them because they didn't go to seminary, they didn't have a seminary back then. These were lay leaders and they were being trained and in a time where there was persecution and there was arguments and things weren't clear and everybody wasn't as spiritually mature as you because the church was in its infancy stage. People grumbled and complained and there were enemies of the church. There were people who came in and tried to undermine their leadership. They tried to, to, to disparage their character. They tried all of these things. And if you're a leader back in that day, it was hard. And it's hard today. And so Paul as he closes out his letter, he offers these words. He says, and we, Timothy and Silas, are also co-authors of the letter with him. He's saying it's not just from me, but it's from my boys as well because we know what you all are going through. And church family, you got some leaders that God has put in your midst and you don't understand what they're going through, but I want you 
I'm influencing, I'm encouraging you, I'm urging you, brethren and sistering, that's homeboy vernacular, need to include the sisters, to recognize, that means to appreciate, to appreciate them, to give them honor. It is appropriate to do it. He said to recognize those who labor among you. He said this is a good thing. It's a good thing to recognize them. Because you all hear them on Sunday, 30, 35, 40 minutes, and y'all get excited and you get full and you go home. Some of y'all shout here in the sanctuary, but you don't know the hours that they have spent for 30 to 40 minutes up here. You don't know how long they have labored on their knees. And they have grappled with that text before they stand up here and say anything to you. It hits them first. And if y'all don't understand it, trust me, they don't understand everything they read and they got to pull out all of the books and pray and what does that mean and question and ask. This is hard work. I know they make it look easy. They're really, really good at it. But trust me, they work hard. If it's a Bible study or whatever they're doing, they work hard at it. It just looks easy, but it's hard. It's time-consuming. I don't know about Wallace and Minister Hope and my Mary, but I know Salt would rather be with me playing golf not as much he'd rather be with Marcy, but he would rather be doing something else. But I want you to understand that he gives us a couple of reasons why we need to respect and honor them. You need to understand that they're leaders in the church. And it's extremely difficult for them because I get to be the quarterback. And so... I get mostly or most of the attention. And they get to be the pips and play the background. But they do it well and they do it humbly. But all of them can out preach me. All of them are that good. They're not background singers. They are good as a solo act all by themselves. They're that good. They could carry Sunday, they could do 52 Sundays a year, each one of them. But leadership is hard. General John Galvin was Supreme Allied Commander in Europe and Commander-in-Chief of the U.S. European Command, was asked what it was like to be in charge of so many and various forces. And his reply was, I often feel like the director of a cemetery. I have a lot of people under me, but nobody listens. Leadership is hard. And I'm not saying that about you all. I'm just saying that if it's 15 people under you, there's 15 different opinions and 15 different personalities, and none of them match yours. And they all think they could be a better leader and do a better job than you. And that's why they tell you what you ought to be doing and should be doing. Leadership is hard. So Paul says, I urge you to recognize and appreciate them. He says, first of all, they labor. They work. And they don't work over us, though God has placed them over you and over us. But he says that they don't just work over us and they don't just work us over They work among us. They work arm in arm, side by side with the body. Though they're called to leadership, they understand that they can't do it all themselves, and so they work among us. Yes, it's not surprising to see them doing menial, mindless tasks. 
that in so many other churches you will never see the pastor or the ministers do that they do regularly work among us. Many times when they're doing the work, they will place themselves under us. They will be subservient when they know they're the leader. They know what should be happening. They know what should be done, and they know how to do it and add the biblical aspect to it. So they don't just work over you, they don't just work under you, but they work alongside of us. There's no way that I could do what I do if they don't do what they do. There's no way that you could be as successful as you are in ministry if they don't work alongside of you. They work, they labor. How many of y'all still have a job? Those that's on Social Security, when the pension check said, God bless you, get some rest tonight, and get up and go to work tomorrow so they can get their check. But if you retired, I know you remember what it's like when you had to go to work and how many Mondays, Tuesdays, Wednesdays, Thursdays, Fridays, you didn't want to go to work because you was tired. You couldn't wait for hump day or the eagle to fly on Friday. And Monday always came too quick, and Friday was always too slow coming. But if you got tired, you understand that they get tired. That it is difficult to work and to sacrifice and give when they have jobs of their own, and yet and still they still come here and they serve. They get physically tired emotionally drained, and they can become spiritually depleted. Some of y'all, some people don't know what it's like to be physically depleted. When you are called on to pray for other people, but you can't find the strength and the energy to pray for yourself, When you don't want to leave your house, you don't even want to leave your bedroom and say good morning or hello to the people who reside where you reside because you're too tired, but the phone rang and somebody needs you and you get up and throw on your clothes and pull your hair back and put on a cap or whatever you do and you go when you don't feel like it. When you need somebody to stop by your house, That's what they do. They labor. They work. And we need to recognize how hard they work. And it gets tiresome. But Minister Hope sang the song, had us sing the song about two years ago. I ain't tired yet. She wasn't talking about me. I'm tired. I stay tired. But they ain't tired yet, but I am. But they get tired. He says, recognize them for the work that they do among you. He says, recognize them because they lead. They lead. This is critical because you all need to understand that their calling comes from God. It's not something that they chose or asked for. It wasn't something that you and I get to vote on. Their leadership, their appointment came from heaven. Their leadership is divinely called and oriented by God. And you nor I can revoke that. So they can't say no. So if we understand that their leadership is not something that came from them, then you and I need to understand or at least appreciate the fact that they probably would rather not do this. They would probably rather do something else. But preaching and teaching and working among the saints 
It's like Jeremiah for them. It's like fire shut up in their bones. And no matter how they try to hold it in or hold it down, it's coming out. They cannot suppress it. They have to let it out because God has called them for it. It's divine. It's difficult. And we got to be careful how we put our hands and our mouth on them. Because of who called them. There's folks, as we talked last week, spending millions of dollars for an office. They ain't spent no money for the office. They didn't ask for your vote. They didn't need your vote. There was only one vote that mattered, and it wasn't a vote. It was a calling. It was a command. Do this. You imagine how many people are vying for leadership positions that are not called, not qualified, not educated, and certainly not sanctified trying to do ministry and minister to people where God has never called them and God has never sent them. And God has called them and sent them to some places that they would rather not go, some places that are dangerous and dark, full of violence, and they don't know what's on the other side of the door, but it never stops them from going because of the call on their life. And they don't do it for money. They don't do it for fame. They're not looking for press clippings and have their name in the paper. I don't follow Facebook. I, I, don't, I don't post on Facebook, but I do follow it. And I have never seen a post from any one of them asking for a like or asking anybody to follow them. And if people are asking you to like them or follow them, they're just insecure. If you're saying something that's worth being heard, people will like it without you asking for it. But if you're a leader, you got to live a life that's worthy for people to follow you in the first place. And leadership at its core is leading people. And this is how you can tell if you're a leader. If you're a leader, look behind you. If somebody following you a leader, if ain't nobody behind you, you want to walk by yourself and you don't know where you are going. They are leaders. They influence. But they influence for the right reasons and for the right cause. Y'all want to know what the right cause is? It says the following principle or the principle of leadership, biblical leadership, is this. Christian leaders should be certain that their goal to serve God and not others. Their goal is to serve and glorify God. Not for anybody else. And that's how you know a genuine biblical leader. When their true heart's desire is I'm doing this for the Lord because there's only one life that matters. In the hearts of the preachers here, these four individuals, they work and they serve for one thing. That one day God will say to them, well done, my good and faithful servant. That's all the light that they need. That's all the light that they're desiring. So recognize them because they labor. Recognize them because they lead. But also recognize them because they admonish. He says, and are over you in the Lord and admonish you. This is hard because the role of the leader while it's extremely difficult and challenging, is that they have the responsibility to correct and warn the body. Let me say that again. The responsibility to warn and correct the body. Now, I know everybody in here grown, and if they're not grown, they think they grown. 
and us grown folk don't like other folk telling us what to do. Especially if the person that's telling you what to do is younger than you. You really, we really don't like that. But guess what? That makes it hard because it don't matter what age it is. Nobody likes to be told what to do. I want to live my life the way I want to live it. I don't need you and nobody else telling me how to live my life. I could do what I want to do. Well, yes, you can. But if you call yourself a Christian, if you call yourself a follower of Christ, you can't do whatever you want to do. You got to do what the Bible says. And when I see you out of line, it's my responsibility to tell you you're wrong and get back in line. Don't fall for that lie that people say, you can't judge me, only God can judge me. You're not reading your Bible. And it is the responsibility of the preacher, of the leader, is to tell us when we're wrong. To get us back in line. And we ain't trying to have no fights with y'all. We want to live a peaceable life. We ain't trying to get socked up and get black eyes from y'all. We ain't trying to have y'all talk about us all up in the parking lot. We see it and sometimes, well, you know, I ain't, I ain't you know, don't nobody want nobody to be in their business. I ain't trying to be in their business. We going to be in your business. It's their job to be in your business when they see it, to call it out and warn you to say, hey, you are going down the wrong road. This is dangerous. It is not biblical. It's not biblical. And we're lining up with God. So come on and get back in line. And you know what's extra hard about that? Sometimes... We're the ones who are in need of some warning and some correction because we don't always have it right. And sometimes it's hard to say, I got to call it out of them, but I'm struggling with it in my own life. And so I got to deal with it and get right first, and then I can come to you. And sometimes it's hard for us to get it right. We trip over the same scenes just like y'all do. Warn. And admonish. So many people leave the church. Talking about church hurt. You ain't quit your job. So let's get rid of that church hurt thing. No, 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 no. The church ain't hurt you. You might have been hurt by somebody in the church, but the church didn't hurt you. The church has helped you and came along and support you. But your boss done acted up and said something, but you didn't quit. You went right on back to work and said what you said and did your job because you needed that check. So let's dispel the notion that there is a such thing as church hurt. And people who are not spiritually mature cannot handle the correction or the warning and they get up and leave. But we're going to tell you anyway. So if you got to get up and leave because the church hurt, we'll limp on to the next church where they won't tell you the truth. But we're going to tell you the truth over here and we want you to tell us the truth so we can all walk together. So get rid of that old whole church hurt notion. The goal of this thing is that we all grow into the image and likeness and maturity of Jesus Christ. We need it and you all need it and we have to hold each other accountable and responsible. So when your minister, your, your, your leader come to you, just say thank you. God bless you. I'm praying for you. Buy them a cup of coffee because you don't know how they grappled and wrestled and had to pray just to come and say that to you. Some of y'all like a good fight, looking for a good fight, but most of us don't like confrontation. 13, he says, and. First word is and. He's connecting what he's about to say to what he just said. Don't miss the very, very highly. Esteem them very highly because the world tears them down. The goal of Satan is to break 
them down, to keep them underfoot, to keep them discouraged, to keep them depressed, to keep them exhausted, to keep them tired. Because if they're dealing with all of those things, they're going to be ineffective when it comes to ministering to you. He said, esteem them. And while they love the gifts, sometimes it's just your word. Sometimes it's a hug, a handshake. Let me tell you, it was so encouraging to me. I'm not going to speak for the rest of them. When uh, Elder Riley stood up and talked about how full he was and what these preachers meant to him. Esteem your leaders. They don't mess up the money. None of them have access to the money. Y'all don't see them driving Rolls Royces and gold rings and pennants and chains and flamboyant, humble people. Esteem them very highly. And he says, in love for their work's sake. And if you would do that, if I would do that, if we would do that, he says, be at peace among yourselves. We will be at peace. Esteeming people is just simply giving words of affirmation, affirming them of their calling, of their leadership, of their labor, of their work, and of their sacrifice. So what is the response of the church? It's simply to follow the leader. Follow the leaders and watch where they're taking you. Follow the leaders. Watch where they take you. But these leaders are worth following. They're not going to lead you someplace that you ought not to be going. They're going to lead you in the right direction. They're going to lead you in the right way. There's a guy by the name of Eli Black. He was a brilliant businessman. And he was known for two events in his life. One, he masterminded the multi-million dollar takeover of the United Fruit Conglomerate. Another thing, he jumped to his death from the 42nd floor of the Pan Am building in New York City. And someone was writing the book, and it was talking about Mr. Black. And this executive described a meeting, a business lunch he had with Mr. Black. And when the waitress brought a plate of cheese and crackers as an appetizer, Black reached out and took him. He's got his arms around the plate while the other guy's sitting across from him. And while they're talking, Black blocked the table while he's eating the cheese and the crackers. He getting down, elbows all in him. The executive had not eaten all day. And he's in this meeting, and this guy is eating and talking to him. The other guy's stomach is growling, backbone talking to his neck bone. He was so hungry. They talked for hours. And the gentleman asked Black, would, I, would it be possible for me to have a cracker? And Black kept on eating like he didn't hear a word he said. He Crumbs falling all on his suit. And after a while, Black felt a little compassion for him and slipped him a cracker. He got cheese on the tip of his fingers and slid him this cracker and kept on talking. And what the executive said, it was clear that Black was in charge and he was manipulating the situation because that pleased him. When we play follow the leader, we need to check to see who's at the head of the line. Eli Black ended up committing suicide because he was an empty shell of a man and jumped to his death. Proud, braggadocious, boastful individual. But he was empty of humility. He didn't lead like Jesus, who was the ultimate leader, and the Savior, 
who was full of humility. So much so that he died for the work. I want to say to Lowry Community Christian Church this morning, follow these leaders. Their heart is after God. And they're humble. And they're loving. And they're kind. And they're generous. And their life's goal is to lead like Jesus so that they can lead you and me to a safe and godly place. That they would lead us to the place of godly transformation. And so Minister Wallace, Minister Small, Minister Golden, and Minister Wall, we salute you on today. And we thank you as we follow your leadership. If you're in the room today, you don't know the way to Christ. We want to point that way to you. We want you to know what it's like to be a follower of Christ. And just because people say it don't mean that they're walking it out. But we are committed to walking out the gospel here. And you can only do that if you're saved. You can only do that if you've given your life to Jesus Christ. And it's our prayer, our hope, and our desire that you would place your faith in him for salvation, that you would turn from a life of sin, that you would confess your sin, and you would repent of it and get to going in the right direction. And if you don't know who to follow, there's people here that you can get behind that can help you lead or lead you to a life of transformation. Is there one? Larry, would you just close your eyes and just pray? Whether there are people in this room or not, whether they're watching online or not, there's people in your community, people around you in your workplace and wherever you go, there's people that you know are not saved. Maybe there's folks in your own family that we need to be praying for. While you're praying for the lost, if you don't have a church home, and Larry's been speaking to you about this is the place where I want you to be, where I want you to grow and learn, would you just step out in the aisle by faith or raise your hand and say, I want to be a member of Lowry Community Christian Church? Is there one? Is there one? It is a journey, one that you don't have to walk alone. And dispel the notion that you don't have to go to church to be a Christian. We don't go to church to be Christian. We go to church because we are Christians. Lord, thank you for Lowry Community Christian Church for its faithful devoted members who are unmatched when it comes to pouring out love on their ministers who are sacrificial when it comes to giving who are not stingy when it comes to loving who are open hearted and open handed when it comes to being a blessing to others. Lord, I thank you for them. Lord, I thank you for their faithful tithing, their faithful giving. Lord, for their unfailing, unswerving devotion to you and to this fellowship. Lord, I thank you on today. Lord, we're thankful that you hold our future in your hand. And, Lord, we have no reason to be afraid of what will happen in the coming days, weeks, or months. Because you are our God. You are the King of kings and Lord of lords. We have no reason to be afraid. We have every reason to be grateful, to be thankful, and to be faithful and to march forward in faith, accomplishing kingdom business.
Lord, we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Would you all give the Lord a hand, praise, as you take your feet. Dwayne, Omar, thank you for coming to worship with us today. We would love to have you all back. If there's anything that we could do for you, if there's a way we could pray for you, please let us know. Do not hesitate to grab any one of our ministers or elders. Y'all raise your hand. Ministers, elders, deacons, raise your hand. If you all need prayer, just grab one of those individuals and say, hey, I just need prayer. You don't even have to tell them what you need prayer for. They'll pray for you or anybody else for that matter. Lowry, I love you. Thank you all for a great Sunday and for all that you do in the name of Jesus and for his kingdom. Let's not quit. Let's keep on going. Let's, let's do what we got to do so that the Lord is proud of what we do and everything that we do, we do for him. Amen? Amen. Sister Deidre, thank you for lending your talents to us and leading us before the throne. God gave you the voice of an angel, and you used it on us today. Thank you so very, very kindly. Now unto him was able to keep you from stumbling and to present you faultless before his presence with exceeding joy. To our God alone who is wise be glory, majesty, dominion, and power both now and forevermore, all God's people said. Amen, amen. God bless you all. Have a beautiful rest of your Sunday.